Yep. Yeah. Like, subscribe, and comment. That's right. This is Brandon Cutler from AEW. You're watching Cole TV. Greetings and salutations, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Pro Wrestling 60, where we recap everything that happened this past week in the world of professional wrestling. I'm Max LJ, the OG, and Mr. B-Roll unable to join us this week. Uh, he's got a little bit of illness going on, so we wish you well, buddy, but that's okay. I'm really lucky because I'm joined by the very beautiful, the very talented one, Cake Face Carly. How are you? I am doing wonderful, and thank you so much for having me. It's nice to be here. Mm, it's a pleasure to help fill in and everything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, big week in the world of professional wrestling. As always, we got a lot yeah. to talk about. So, as we always say here on the show, B rolls line. Time the clock starts now. And our top story this week was WWE Bad Blood took place this past Saturday night from Atlanta, Georgia. And, you know, you and I, as well as B-Roll, got to watch this show together, which yeah. was awesome. It was a fun time. Uh, what did you think of Bad Blood overall? Honestly, I really enjoyed it. I think even with starting off with CM Punk and during the beginning and ending it with the new Bloodline story, I think they did a really good job of making it entertaining throughout. and. It was actually really enjoyable. Yeah, I agree. Like it was, I mean, you kind of knew my thoughts going into it was I was a little upset that Punk and Drew were opening it, but uh, we kind of know why that was the place after we found out everything that went down at Bad Blood. But uh, right. <laughs> uh, big, you know, it was a big show for developing like storylines and kind of ending some storylines as well. So, um, but let's get right into it. And first and foremost, of course, we got to talk about that main event the tag team matchup that we thought we would never see cody rhodes teaming up with roman reigns the unlikely unlikely duo going up against solo sokoa and jacob fatu um first off like i mean obviously we the aftermath of this match i think is what everybody remembers the most what did you think of the match itself Honestly, I thought it was great. I liked seeing Solo and Jacob work together. And I was first thinking, you know, surprisingly, the chemistry between Roman and Cody was pretty good. But, I mean, it makes sense. They've already main evented twice together at WrestleMania. I mean, they were going to have great chemistry. So, with them being partners, it was a it was nice to see a different dynamic between the two. Yeah. But, overall, I think it was amazing. And it was also great seeing jacob who was just who was this indie superstar have such a high profile match oh my gosh yeah that was like my my biggest takeaway from all the competitors in this one really was was jacob fatu man oh, hell yeah. I, I i would have liked to seen more the greedy wrestling fan in me but still it was pretty it was pretty damn solid nonetheless how about cody that spot off the top taking uh jacob's uh like like the uh flash yeah, I was not expecting that from the American Nightmare. But I mean, this to me was a it was your your, your typical classic kind of tag team match encounter. You know, like they they incorporated uh, a lot of tag team wrestling into as, as far as like, you know, the the spots and whatnot, and the storytelling, you know, getting that hot tag eventually uh, to yeah. Roman and stuff. I feel like definitely Cody and, and, uh, Jacob were the workhorses in this match too. And no yes. disrespect to Roman or solo. Um, but yeah, like you say, it was, it was a pretty solid match. It, it was a slow start, but it was like a big build. And of course the big crescendo at the end. And of course, yes, we got to talk about that. How about it? 
Jimmy Uso is back in the WWE. Oh, I remember you like you were you it, it was funny because your feed was slightly ahead of ours and you were like popping hard and we're just like, okay, what's going on? Something's happening. And then like lo and behold, you see this guy in a mask and a hood, and it's like solo knows, like, wait a minute, what? And then right. you get the, the super kicks in the reveal. How great is it to see Jimmy Uso back? This was really nice to see. It was also really great timing because everyone was expecting because of all, of, you know, with the internet being the internet, there was speculation about possibly The Rock because he was in Georgia and everything, but no one was expecting Jimmy that night. And yeah. just the 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 initial reaction of seeing Solo just stop mid of what he was doing to be like, who the hell is this guy? just masked all in black. And then as soon as you see that super kick to Tama Tonga, I was like, okay, you know exactly who this is. And oh, when he unveiled himself, it was just so magical. And honestly, this and everything after that was just so magical between him and Roman. It was really, really cool to see. Oh, yeah. Yeah, magical is the best way to describe it. I just, I love that moment with him and and roman and he's like i got you i'm with you and and then they have that embrace and i was like ah. like it just felt and it's just crazy when you think about it what roman put all these guys through you know what he put everything everybody through you know and, and yeah. the fact that like we're all like so behind this and so enamored with this and so wanted to see this reunion i mean it just just goes to show you you gotta let them cook uh, and oh, yeah. then, of course, like you said, they're at the end, you know, they're leaving and then Cody starts getting beaten down by the bloodline in the ring. And then, like, even Jimmy says to, to Rome, he's like, I'll do whatever you want to do. You know, he put it in Roman's uh, hands and Roman decided to do the right thing and come in and make the save. And then and then what about that moment, too, with the when he picks up the title belt? Yeah. And like, oh, my God, you're just like, ah. Oh, planting the seeds. It's just like, I, I love it. But the biggest moment, though, by far, yes, the final boss made a return there at the end of the night. We were we were freaking screaming to the top of our lungs, marking yes. out for this. <laughs> oh, this was god, just like, yeah. oh, my God. It was, uh, oh, it was so good. It was so good. Yeah, because um, at one point we were thinking since Jimmy showed up, we weren't thinking, you know, a... Uh, I mean, because we had already seen before this, you know, which we'll talk about later, you know, Raquel returning and now Jimmy, we didn't think, you know, okay, well, maybe yeah. The Rock will come back soon. Maybe not now, but oh my God, that right? was just insane. And, and the whole, the, 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 the one, two, three, and then the, and that, like, that, like, like it, right it's like it's such a tease it's like okay wait a minute what's he what's he really talking about here i think we know but we don't know and that's the beautiful thing with storytelling right. and professional yes. wrestling like this it, it was so threatening it was just like even through the screen it was like ooh, what did i do <laughs> yeah because you see it's like everybody's kind of just like oh shit is the rock because even you got the bloodline scurrying up into the the crowd and they're just going like, oh yeah and, the, and then you got you know roman and cody kind of looking at each other like hmm okay uh my question to you i'm gonna put you in the hot seat here what do you think this means where do you think this leads to well um i think from seeing like certain little videos online like at first i didn't know really what to think of who he was really doing that gesture towards i mean was yeah. it towards the new bloodline because they're technically mimicking the the real bloodline were they was he doing it towards cody and roman because they have this weird alliance now like but i think now seeing uh a couple things just like that had surfaced about someone like interviewing the rock as he was like between some of like like the buses and everything and kind of talking smack about cody and everything i feel like I feel like he's not done with Cody. And no. I think even when yeah. he was in the ring before he made his hiatus and, you know, he shook his hand and whispered in his ear, it was just that there, there's something that's going to be, it's going to be intense. It's 
It's going to be something. Yeah, and I'm here for it. I'm excited to see what the final boss has got up his sleeve. Um, one last thing before we move on here. Do you think, with the timing of this, do you think this leads to something at Survivor Series? Because a lot of people are hankering, thinking, okay, it's going to be a bloodline civil war of some sorts going into war games. Do you think Rock somehow, but probably not in the match, but do you think he's involved in some capacity? If they're going to do that with the old bloodline, a new line, a new bloodline, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, with, with how much he already expressed in the, in the recent past of how much power he has, if he has any type of blood boiling in the midst of all of this, yeah, he is going to have a very major part. I almost feel kind of like like he's going to side with the with this new bloodline. Honestly, I think I, I think he's the that one that too. planted the seeds. Yeah, yeah. So, well, time will tell. It's going to be interesting to see what the final boss has to say about all this. And now it's coming this time for the show. We just need some advice. We need some advice. From our friendly neighborhood, Dad Hat. So let's go to Dad Hat with Dad Hat's Tip of the Week. It's that time of the week again. Dad Hat's Life Lessons of the Week. Brought to you by World Championship Wreckage. Find them on YouTube, Twitter, and TikTok. And also by the Russell Talk Wolfpack. 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. every Wednesday. Twitch.tv slash Russell Talk Wolfpack. And now, here's Dad Hat. All right, kids, always remember to respect people's boundaries. Not everybody is going to want to discuss something with you right then and there when you want to discuss it. Sometimes people have to have their own time to process things. Respect people's boundaries. We'll talk some other time. We got to focus on this. Hey, thing. If we need to talk. Dude, let's just I talk. just said not now. Okay, look, I'm. Cody, we will talk, just not now. Brother! <laughs> oh! Hey, hey! 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 I guess the time to talk was apparently after uh, Bad Blood for Kevin Owens. Uh, yeah, you, so many things coming out of that main event, and this is definitely one of them too, because this didn't even happen like on uh, like the pre, the after show, the press conference, nothing like that. This right. just popped up like with just fans filming it. Like this, mm -hmm. kudos to WWE too. Like I, I mean, for for having the balls to do like something like this. This is I think this is a pretty cool segment the way this uh, or whatever you want to call it uh the way you went down and i know you're excited about ko finally turning heel yes i think not even just him turning heel it's just and I, I love kevin owens but god he has just gotten not skill wise but character wise he's gotten a little soft in my opinion it's just like mm -hmm. okay let's be buddy buddy and i'll like you know oh the funny segments with kevin owens or oh he's freaking out again and it's funny but i've missed that genuine fight owens fight like yes this this and to see it come back i mean unfortunately cody rhodes has to be the brunt of it but i mean i'm yeah. happy to see it yeah i agree with you and i think it's gonna be i'm, I'm very excited to see where cody goes and with yes. ko now from this as this rivalry is getting ready to start heat up man going and and we and we know like uh well we're gonna talk about it here in a little bit uh about crown jewel um but uh uh <laughs> one would think maybe survivor series perhaps these two could be meeting but then again a lot of people thinking well would cody be in the war games it's just that's the thing right now there's so many different elements so many different things going on in wwe right now that's coming out from bad blood that's like yeah it's just exciting to see where they're gonna go from here really um cool. but yeah this, this this was awesome seeing after it makes it less predictable too because there's yeah. so much going on it's not like oh well this happened or after Bad Blood, so this will be coming up next. It's like, okay, what is going to happen? So that's intriguing for, for me. Oh, yeah, 100%. I couldn't agree with you more. Oh, let's talk about this, though. The match that opened the show. 
Hell in a Cell, CM Punk and Drew McIntyre finally ending their rivalry. Um, as a deathmatch enthusiast, Carly, I got to ask you, what were your thoughts on this Hell in a Cell? I honestly loved it for the WWE standards of an extreme type of match. I think they did an excellent job. Of course, the gratuitous amounts of blood was double thumbs up in my opinion. But I mean, I think just overall, you know, both men put on such an amazing show. You could tell the genuine feelings of each other in the match, mm -hmm. as well as what they're doing just as part of their character in the match as well. But God, it was it was incredible and violent. And they they really did a good job, like I said, within WWE standards of the extremities of a match like that. Yeah. One thing I loved about this is like we went kind of old school. This this truly I can't think of the last time where there was like a hell in a cell match that like, OK, this is what a hell in a cell match is supposed to be. Right. Yeah. And they what I loved about this matchup is they really utilize their environment. They didn't do like a bunch of like insane, crazy, like high spots or anything like that. I, it was just brutal. Just just the brutality yeah. of it, like the uh, the stuff with the toolbox. Now the toolbox, the ring steps. I mean, my God, that spot with Drew where he went to go um, do the Claymore and he landed on the ring oh, steps on his back, uh, which was covered in the beads, by the way. Um, covered in you, the beads. Of course, you you and I were both talking about this. We were in it. we we were really hoping it was going to be glass, but that's the greedy I, fickle wrestling yes. fan in us. Um, greedy but, petty. <laughs> but we totally get it. Like what, what what the semblance and what they're trying to tell well, here with course, the story with with the bracelet and everything. Oh yeah, I just hope we get a Joey and Fabrics commercial out of this or something. You know, like I mean, yeah, WWE. You like to work with everybody else, so. So why not, why not do that? Um, but this this was a this was a hell of a match to open the show. And, and honestly, it opening it still didn't take away from the, like just the gruesomeness, the brutality of this, the amazement. I think it did really hurt the other performers for the rest of the night because it was like one of those. Well, hey, you top that, uh, but right? Man, it just felt so good to see, finally see a hell in a cell like that. Truly felt like okay, this is what a hell in a cell is supposed to be about. Uh, yeah, and here we are now. Looks like uh, Punk picking up the win, and Punk and Drew moving on to other things. But nonetheless, the Hell in a Cell match from Bad Blood, of course, is our match of the week here on PW60. Um, I just, I, I absolutely adore this match. I've went, have, have you went back and watched this yet? Because I have. <laughs> I haven't yet, but I mean, it's yeah. just it. Honestly, I couldn't say enough good things about this. I was very impressed. Yeah. Yeah. I, th this was a tremendous matchup. Um, definitely. De Hell, you could argue this may be one of WWE's best matches of the year, in all honesty. Uh, and, yeah. and that's the saying something. Definitely the best match out of the series between Punk and Drew. That's oh, yeah. Say. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh. Well, also at Bad Blood, we got to see Mommy Rhea Ripley challenge Liv Morgan for that WWE Women's World Championship. Uh, of course, with Dirty Dom suspended above the ring or above in the shark cage, I should say. Uh, like, first off, like, we got to talk about the spot with Dom where he falls out of the damn cage and Maria pretty much just treats him like a damn pinata. <laughs> like, that was fantastic. That, yeah. Uh, I, I feel think bad was, for him, though. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. It's like, oh damn, dirty dumb. Like, but you just, you know, he 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 couldn't stand being behind bars once again, you know. So he had to get away out. Oh somewhere. yeah. Um, the only thing I think would have made that better is if, like, when he went upside down, like, uh, if like chicken nuggets would have fell out of his like, uh, or chicken tendies would have fell out of his like. As she was something. beating him. <laughs> yes, yes. That yes. that would have been amazing. On oh so many levels. So. Um, oh, they have to run it back and do that again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Just for but, a nuggy spot. <laughs> just for a nuggy spot. Maybe we do a, a nuggies on the pole match or something next. Who knows? Please. But the, 
the big thing coming out of this one, we got the return of one Raquel Rodriguez as she returned to help Liv Morgan retain her championship. Yeah. Uh, of course, a little bit of a wonky kind of like finish there. Um, unfortunately, like uh, some timing was off and whatnot, but still, um, it's great to see Raquel back in the WWE. I'm a little surprised she's with Liv though, because I really thought like she would kind of be coming back against her because I believe, if I remember correctly, Raquel's last match before she had to go out again was against Liv. Um, but apparently not. Apparently she's for joining up with her former tag team partner. Uh, is this mean Raquel's part of the Judgment Day now? I think that would be really a really cool dynamic to have her as part of the judgment yeah. day. I mean, they're kind of they're hinting at it with her being you know a little more alternative looking the darker makeup mm -hmm. the darker outfits you know just you know helping not only because i mean she didn't even go to help live at first she went to go help dominic so that was very interesting at first just to be like her helping him and then going to help live but yeah, I didn't think about that. That's a good point. I think I think this may give her an end to be part of the judgment day. It'd be interesting to have two women as part of it. I think that would be really, really cool. Um, especially if they end up having the women's tag team championships between the two of them. That'd be cool to have that in gold wise within the new judgment day or street trash or whatever it is yeah. they are. Whatever we're calling this, yeah. Whatever they are, but yeah, yeah. I, I think this was really cool. And I know you like mentioned about like the ending kind of being weird, but thankfully the the moment was kind of stolen with just Raquel being in there, so it kind of yeah. took away from that ending. But yeah, I'm really excited for this. I think it'll be really yeah. cool. Yeah, I'm excited. I agree. I'm excited to see what Raquel's going to do and uh, where the Judgment Day goes from here because. Unfortunately, they didn't have a clean sweep of bad blood, at least unfortunate for them, yeah. as uh, Finn Balor went one-on-one -on -one against Damian Priest in the, this highly anticipated one-on-one -on -one matchup, and not even the entire Judgment Day could stop Bisexual Undertaker. That's right, <laughs> Damian Priest uh, would pick up the win here. Um, and it's just like, I, 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 which is fine and all, but I feel like if they were going to still continue to feud, it probably should have went in Finn's favor. Because I feel like we're not done with this rivalry, right? Does it feel that way? Honestly, I mean, you really can't be, especially with the girls match alone with, you know, now there's going to be this new element with Rhea and Raquel. And with this, I mean, with Damien and especially Damien and Finn, like, Finn's going to have to have a win at some point to finally yeah. conquer that demon figuratively and literally, you yeah. know, I think, yeah, this is definitely far from done. Oh, the one thing way, I think, oh yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. Um, the one thing I find interesting about this though, is there's a story that come out and I don't know how true this is and I'd take it for what it is, uh, a rumor, if you will, that, uh, for now, they are going to kind of split up the Terror Twins, which to me, that doesn't make a whole hell of a lot of sense, but uh, uh, I, I, I don't know what the purpose of that is. Uh, it doesn't make sense, too, especially since they're both feuding against the Judgment Day, but uh, yeah, time will tell. And like I say, at the end of the day, ultimately, it is just a rumor, but we'll have yeah. to see what happens from that. That would be kind of a shame because I think it would mm -hmm. be really cool, especially to have for you know the history books for WWE at least to have a uh an intergender you know tag team take the titles i think that Ooh, would be really cool. i would I love that that I mean, especially totally i mean with that. Rhea's size and everything she's able to go against the men and just and her skill level too i mean i feel like that that would be a really good move for them and especially mm. to be show you know the progression of wwe and everything i think that would be yeah. a good idea but that would suck if that is the truth though that they're gonna kind of split them up a little bit well papa h we know he's watching but you should definitely book what carly just said there like i didn't even think about that i would love to see that like that yes. that needs to happen i hope you just talk that into existence because we need that to happen manifest, manifest, manifest. <laughs> 
Well, also at Bad Blood, we got to see Nia Jax retain her WWE Women's Championship against Bailey. And I think this is another one of those like matches that the time they met up where like I wasn't expecting anything, but it was a pretty solid match. Of course, they had the unfortunate uh, uh, spot of having to follow immediately after that brutal Hell in a Cell matchup. Yeah. But you know what? All things considered, I think they both did a pretty damn good job. Oh, um, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, what did you think about the chemistry that, between them as well as the, this matchup overall? I think experience-wise between the two of them and everything, I think the chemistry was absolutely great. Um, like you said, I mean, they did have to follow one hell of a match, no pun intended. <laughs> but um, I think overall they did a really good job. Naya keeps getting better and better. I mean, yeah, she had the one Hurricane Rana that – did, probably didn't live up to a lot of people's expectations, but I mean, for her to actually like do the stuff and everything and her like elevating herself instead of just being, how do I put this as for a lot of people who are a little bit bigger in WWE, they're just kind of like, Oh, the big people let's crush. And, mm. but she's proving to be more than that. And it's really exciting to see, but yeah. I think the match overall was was really good for what it was. Yeah, I agree too. And then um I also think too as well the now this story progressing with uh, her and Tiffany. Yes. Uh, with with kind of the confusion there on the cash and stuff. I think we're about to kind of reach that crescendo mm -hmm. on, on that friendship. So that's going to be interesting and compelling to see. Um you know, one more thing I want to mention here, too, uh, not just for these two competitors, but of all the competitors at Bad Blood, too. I love, like, some of their homage, like, uh, as far as, like, their gear and stuff. Like, yes. we talked about Bailey having the, the stuff in her hair to, like, with the, it looked like it was blood, and, like, Naya's gear was sick. Um, and I think um, uh, Rhea had some, too, as well. Like, mm -hmm. all, all of them. Everything was great. Everything was great, honestly about bad blood uh it was a tremendous show and oh shit yeah <laughs> well <laughs> almost everything we gotta talk about this abomination so they teased triple h would have this major announcement and what the fuck are we doing wwe so apparently at crown jewel which let's call a spade a spade. Uh, it's one of those shows. It's probably the least one I care about personally, if I'm being honest. Uh, I think a lot of fans would say that too. Like I don't really care for the Saudi Arabian shows and for, for, for reasons, but we're, we're not going to talk about that. Um, but yeah. Okay. So let me get this straight. We're going to take our world champion and the WWE champion, and we're going to do the same with the women. We're gonna put them up against each other, and they're not. Their titles aren't gonna be in the line, but this fucking thing is. Like, uh, y you get this. What good does that do for like the? I, I don't understand. Like, or, like, what do you think of this whole mess? And, and correct me if I'm wrong. Is it so? After they win this, they keep it for a year until I, the next time. I, I guess I don't know. Like, or maybe it's one of those things where it's like. Uh, Every year, it's going to be champion versus champion. It's going to be their gimmick, I guess. I don't get it because, I mean, honestly, I mean, we have something similar to that already, which minus a belt involved, which, well, I forgot the last time they've done this, but like, you know, the whole night of champions where it's like one champion versus the other. It's not for the belt, but it's just to be like, hey, which one of our top champions can get on top? You know, and, yeah. you know, same with the women and everything like that. I feel like it was just like, damn, Triple H, like, you came out, took time with your entrance, you know, hyping up the crowd, and then we we got shown this. I mean, uh, positives. All right, we can do this, Carly. So, I mean, it looks nice. I mean, it, it's cool looking. It just, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Especially because yeah. I like with the whole night of champions thing. I just thought of that. It's like, we already kind of have that concept, you know, because from my understanding, it's like usually the world heavyweight and the WWE. And then it's the two women. And then like, you know, 
U.S. title, intercontinental, so on and so forth type of thing. And I, I don't know. It, it's weird. It's different. Yeah, just, I don't know. It's a head scratcher to me. Uh, I guess the good thing out of this, though, um, depending on who wins tonight on Raw, but there's a good possibility we're getting a Cody and Gunther matchup. Which I have no idea how the hell they're going to book that, but uh, yeah, like, I, I guess like you say, glass is half full. So right, but, but I mean, so yeah, th- this is going to be a thing, and I mean, okay, so, great. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh no, I was going to say, let me ask you this because of how you're saying that a lot of people really aren't into the whole like with the crown jewel and like the Saudi events or everything. Do you feel like this belt gimmick is WWE's way? Because I mean, obviously they're, if they're for the fans, they're seeing that the fans really aren't, you know what I mean? Like at least some fans are really aren't digging the whole thing with like the crown jewel and the like Saudi shows and everything. Do you feel like this is WWE's way of like, Oh, Hey, something cool is going to happen and try and like reel more people in. Yeah, I think so. Uh, If I'm being honest, too, I also think this kind of tells me that the idea to do Roman against Cody fell through or they're just saving it for something else because I think that's kind of what they were leaning towards. Um, But I just, I don't know. I just, I wasn't feeling this. Um, But you know what? Bad Blood was still a great show regardless of just having one bad fuck. Ew. Oh shit, we gotta talk oh, about no, this. Oh, it's too. your favorite part. Oh yeah, this old <laughs> bastard. Look at him. Fucking piece of shit. Uh yes, uh Goldberg. I mean, he's in Atlanta, it's his hometown. <laughs> the only place he's gonna get cheered. I, I don't know why you love this guy, Atlanta. I don't get it. Um Yeah, he was there. I will say this. It was kind of funny Gunther talking to like calling him out and shit, but I swear to God above if WWE gets stupid enough to book a Gunther Goldberg match, I'm going to lose my fucking shit. Like I, I, if that happens, I pray that Goldberg gets such an ass whooping. So many like chops, just fucking. Yeah. Just chop his old ass down and be done with it. Cause I don't, (laughs) I really don't want to see Goldberg in another freaking uh, ring oh uh, yeah so all right you, ha- you had a couple like this segment obviously was the drizzling shit but the rest of the show was a pretty solid um yeah. bad blood i would say so but it was a big week in the world of wrestling because that wasn't the only big show let's talk about this aew dynamite celebrating their five years can you believe it's been five years the dynamite has been on the air like holy crap it's uh, so incredible. Like yeah. the, the fact of how much AEW just in general has accomplished just being five. Like right? It, it's it's really astonishing. And I think a lot of people need to put that into perspective too, especially a lot of you people really do who really douse the hatred onto AEW. It's like you guys, they've only been doing this for a little over five years and they just had their five year anniversary of dynamite. So it's like they're they're gonna work out the kinks. Don't worry. Let them, let them have this moment. It was a it was a great show. Absolutely. Um, of course, talk let's talk about that opener. This dream matchup we've been clamoring God. for: the Ricochet, Will Osprey, uh, for the international title, uh, back and forth, and then um, that crazy like pinfall finish, and then they restart the match, and it's like, oh, thank God. And then this son of a bitch right here ruins it all in his damn <laughs> MC Hammer fluffy pants, Takeshka. <laughs> but, oh, you son of a bitch. Like, this was such a good matchup. I, big thing, big takeaway for me on this one is, I, well, obviously, I wasn't a fan of the finish. I understand why it happened, because we're going to run this back for sure. Oh, uh, yeah. The big exciting thing, though, out of this, we're getting a triple threat with Takeshka Osprey and Ricochet coming up at yes. uh, Wrestle Dream, uh, which is this Saturday. It's like God, stuff happens so freaking fast. Mm-hmm. Um, but that that at least we're getting that. Just kind of a little disappointed how this match ended, but you know that's the greedy fickle wrestling fan in me. You oh, know, of course. 
you, you know they're gonna cook and it's gonna be some good shit um whenever they do have their one-on-one matchup uh let's talk about the rest of dynamite's five-year anniversary show um i know how much you love mark briscoe uh what about what about that moment with him and jericho in the ring and that's like jericho like name dropping jay and then like shit got serious <laughs> Who I I felt that in the in like a pit of my my being just like the yeah. the things that Chris was saying about Jay and you know saying like oh well he could beat me but I don't think you could Mark and just it was it was amazing and it's also nice seeing Mark Briscoe really really shine mm-hmm. you know and not you know I mean having this moment as just him but still having his brother with him in spirit you can you can just so absolutely tell that oh yeah but oh my gosh that that was really good and i mean as a jericho fan even with him doing this you know learning tree bullshit i i love chris jericho i can't help it mm-hmm. and so to see them together this it's going to be really really cool yeah yeah will and chris that will come uh... in the way they yeah, he's going for the new wave, uh, and that'll happen at Wrestle Dream as well. And also, we got to see uh, Juice Robinson go up against Hangman Page. But look who's back! It's the Switchblade, baby. The Switchblade, Jay White. Yes, Jay White returning uh, to attack uh, a Hangman Page and make the save for Juice Robinson. Um, not official yet, but it does look like that will probably be signed to Wrestle Dream as well. Yes. Jay White against uh, Hangman Page. So great to see Jay White back. I know you're excited oh, yeah. for this. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, any anything with with Jay White, he he's it's it's nice to see him back. He has such a a, a different element of his talent that that was missed while he was gone. Definitely. So really cool. Yeah. Yeah, I could I couldn't agree with you more, Carly. And the uh, matchup with uh, Britt Baker, of course, in her hometown, going up against the Professor Serena Deeb, a tremendous matchup, uh, and great to see like Britt Baker back at it again. Um, yeah. And I hate to say it, elephant in the room here, just goes to show you like Britt has some great chemistry with a lot of talent, but a certain someone with the some money if you will just just doesn't work so just throwing that out there uh <laughs> also uh got to see private party how about put this ascension of private party now like we're getting them pushed too which is i'm to loving this push for private party really? like ever since the beginning of aew that was because i already told you this but this was the first tag team that i fell in love with like as like a homegrown tag team for like AEW and everything. It was just like, mm-hmm. wow, I'm so impressed. They, they had that, you know, Hardy boy type of vibe to them, but like, but their own flavor and which was really cool that they ended up working with the Hardys later on. And, but it was just, this is so cool to see that finally, finally they're getting that push that they deserve. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm excited for it. And then of course, in your main event, we got Kasuchika Okada. Going up against Brian Danielson in their third matchup. Uh, this was the tie. Um, of course, you had the... This was interesting in the sense, okay, so the first 20 minutes, the Continental title was on the line. And then after that, it was just straight up for the AEW title. Uh, of course, Danielson would pick up the win after that 20-minute mark. Um, I love, too, how it was just, like, with a simple black backslide. Like, uh, I don't know. Yeah. There's sometimes like with some simplistic stuff like that. I just love. And of course, mm-hmm. Danielson retains his uh, AEW World Championship as we're now heading into uh, Wrestle Dream where he's going to go up against John Moxley. And then, of course, the, the uh, I guess we're still calling the Blackpool Combat Club uh, coming out there at the end. And then the stuff with Wheeler. And now we're getting this uh, tag team match on Dynamite with Wheeler teaming up yeah. again with uh, Danielson to go up against Pac and uh claudio so it's gonna be interesting to see what they do there so Absolutely. uh overall though uh, the fifth year of anniversary of dynamite was tremendous and aew's got a lot of great things on the horizon because yes it is finally official aew has signed the deal with warner brothers discovery and this will include them 
I, th I believe, if I remember correctly, I think it's for the next three years, I want to say, or maybe no longer. You might but have to repeat that one more time for Eric Bischoff because I don't think you heard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I, I, um, the big thing coming out of this is the fact that they're now going to be streaming on Max too. So you will be able to see AEW there. Uh, also, their pay per views will be on Max, but um, everybody just know you still got to pay for it, but you get it at a discounted rate. So um personally i would have liked it free because my pocketbook would like that but you know what it's okay we'll take this anything's better than bleacher report though i mean fuck bleacher report so uh i'm okay with this but uh this is exciting i mean the, here's the thing like people whether you love AEW, hate AEW, whatever like this is good for all pro wrestling the fact that like you've yeah. got these major conglomerates like trying to gobble up airtime for professional wrestling because it draws it brings people in so this is this is great for everybody honestly so excited to see it and i'm excited to see them on max too i think that's gonna be cool yeah. to see and, and be able to access their library as well which i'm assuming that will come with it as well so good times ahead for all elite wrestling but exciting news congratulations to you papa con and AEW, and can't wait to see where we go from here and also, we got to talk. This is another huge story coming out this week. God, just so many shows, Carly, and so little time. Yeah. Uh, NXT made its debut on the CW with a solid show coming out of the Allstate Arena there in Chicago. Uh, of course, it kicked off with that highly anticipated matchup with Julia challenging Roxanne for the NXT Women's Championship. Uh, great back and forth. But uh, a big surprise coming out of this one because uh, Brock Sam would retain that championship, but it was mostly because of a returning Cora Jade who helped Roxanne, her former friend, uh, retain her NXT Women's Championship. How surprised were you with this outcome of this matchup? Well, first off, we had a return and two debuts. Let's just keep it real here. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty big. Yeah. Pretty you're big not, debuts. Yeah, no. you're not. You're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, congratulations, girl. They look great. But um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, the match was incredible. I wasn't able to see it live, but I went back and watched it and everything. But wow, it it was of course you know with the anticipation build up from it and everything. It was really cool to see both girls really throw down in the ring, and of course. With Cora being back, I love Cora Jade, so it was really cool to see her return. Yeah, I think it's going to be interesting, the dynamic with her and Roxanne, too. I always enjoyed them when they were kind of a team there for a little while. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that's going to be interesting to see, of course. And now we know we got, you know, Stephanie Fakura is on the horizon. Yes. Uh, as well as uh, what appears to be Delta is coming, too, with the, as we saw in a, a vignette on this show, so... Mm -hmm. um man the women's division uh, we say it here every week the nxt women's division has to be probably by far the best women's wrestling division going today um let's talk about the rest of nxt's debut on the cw how about that matchup the street fight um my god like that matchup holy crap with that wesley was, yeah. and zachary wentz oh my gosh Love that matchup. Of course, Wesley picking up the win. Um, we also got to see a lot of cameos, as you can see. Of course, the show kicking off with Shawn Michaels and Triple H. Mm -hmm. uh, Bianca uh, Belair and um, Jada showed up uh, to help out. Uh, what's her name again? Because I just like... Kailani uh, Jordan. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> it. Because she just has no personality and I don't really care. I'm sorry. I said what I said. Y'all know how I feel about Kalani Jordan. She's a great athlete, but that's about as far as it goes. Um, uh, also, this uh, this showdown with Tony D'Angelo and Oba Femi. I mean, okay, I guess, but like on Miss TV, by the way. But I mean, uh, like Oba Femi is going to, I love, uh, like Tony, I respect you, dude, but he is going to wipe the floor with you. Like, I, I don't see anybody beating Oba Femi anytime soon. Not for a while, yeah. You know, I mean, like, I, I, that begs the question, who the hell is going to stop this guy? I mean, your guess is as good as mine. But, yeah. Uh, and, of course, we got that um, tag match uh, as well. But let's talk about your main event as we got to see 
won Trick Williams go up against All Ego Ethan Page for the NXT Championship. And yes, we have a new NXT champion as the Trick Williams era has begun once again. How Appa Pro. Oh, uh, poor All Ego. We love All Ego here. Like so love I hate you. to see I hate to see him lose it, but good for Trick though, you know. Like so um I'm curious to see where they go from here though. Like, and I would love to continue to see Trick and Ego kind of like feud over that championship belt. That'd be um, cool. But I'm not shocked with this by the least bit. I mean, it kind of had a feeling. It makes sense. It's a new era. It's on the CW. Um, why they went ahead and did this. So, but He's Trick really Williams is popular right now. Yeah. Too. Yeah. So, but Trick Williams is your new NXT champion. Of course, he had to be our wrestler of the week here on PW60. Now, I almost wonder, too, coming out of this, Carly, um, because All Ego had some fun things to say on um, X or Twitter, whatever you want to call it, about one CM Punk, who was the special guest referee in this match. Yeah. You think maybe something's going to come from that? That would be definitely interesting. I feel like especially with CM Punk gracing NXT with his presence more frequently lately, I mean, it's definitely possible. Yeah. But... I don't know. It would. Be, it's going to be interesting where to see where uh, Ethan Page is going to go from here, as well as the second title run for uh, Trick Williams. Yeah. Now, one thing I don't know if you noticed this or not, but on WWE social media, they kind of did a funny segment there with uh, CM Punk and Shawn Michaels and mm. uh, a Triple H, kind of a throwback to uh, Punk, like dressing like Shawn Michaels in the many referee spots. Uh, he had with them extra, extra shorty shorts. And just the real question is, is like, <laughs> what the hell were you smuggling in those shorts? You know, inquiring minds want to know. But thankfully like, for us here. Oh, yeah. I feel like the question is, what wasn't he smuggling in his <laughs> that day? <laughs> yeah. No kidding. All right. Well, thankfully for us here at PW60, we just so happens to be our good buddy, the best scout machine was on the scene trying to figure out what the heck did CM Punk have in his shorts in this segment. So let's go to the best scout machine with a report on this. City, the world was shocked and amazed when they witnessed CM Punk in those pink shoes and those cowboy hats and those trunks. But I feel like he was hiding something in those trunks. And today, we're going to go over that. They could have been stuffed with socks, a roll of nickels, Nickelodeon Gak, Delicious Shackalicious XL Gummies, The Least Attractive Twin, The Least Attractive Twin, quite possibly he might have Friar Gout in there. Another part of the Goutiverse, we have become friends, we exchange letters, and we both play Go Fish. We may have seen each other naked, but I think I know who's in those shorts. My Pekka. Sean Michaelson, grab my Pekka. Oh yeah, macho gout. Oh yeah, macho gout, Randy Goutage. Oh yeah, up in here with the frills. Oh, I put myself in a predicament that I'd rather not be in. I think I'm gonna have to run an elbow chop on the evil gout so I can help the other gouts. Wish me luck. I'm gonna go to that shadow zone up there in that parallelogram of the universe. Yeah, I'm gonna be the cream of the crop. I'm gonna drink a lot of coffee and a little bit of drugs. Well, oh, thank <laughs> God. Thank God for macho gout. I mean, uh, now maybe somebody can stop this evil gout in the gout multiverse. Yeah. Uh, like, could he, maybe he's like the Captain America or something of the gout multiverse. But uh, that's true. I'm glad good. he was able to figure out what was in CM Punk's pants. I mean, now we know it's Tony Atlas. <laughs> yeah, totally. Totally. Like, and, and a bunch of feet and feet. Pants. Yes. <laughs> and a feet finder account. Anything to do with feet. <laughs> Anyways, hey, let's talk about Friday Night SmackDown from this past uh, week, which was a big show there, of course, uh, right before Bad Blood. But first off, we got the return of one AJ Styles, uh, yeah. which was good to see him. But the injury thing, like, you know, you hate to see that. But uh, yeah. if 
you look too deep into it, you know, what are we doing here, brother? Is this cafe? You know, it's up to your interpretation. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens with the phenomenal one from here. But uh, it's great to see him back, and hopefully we get to see him every other Friday on um, Friday Night SmackDown. But yeah. oh yeah. my, this, this right here. Oh, my gosh. Is this maybe the best dumpster match in WWE history? It could be. I mean, there's oh, been some definitely great. Not, and definitely in the in the top for sure. This oh, yeah. was just great. And just this is such a great thing for Chelsea, too, because people are really starting to rally behind her of really wanting to push her. So just having more stuff like this, just her being her, she's really mm -hmm. proving that she doesn't have to have that, you know, you know, how a lot of a lot of the women in the division right now are more, you know, have that machismo to them and just like oh, really yeah. it's badass like women. I mean, she's badass too, but you know what I mean? She's badass in, in a demure, very mindful way. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it's cool yeah. to see her really showing success in that light and being that person in the division. So it's really cool to see that. Yeah, I I couldn't agree with you more there. And then the Meechin too, getting to see yeah. her kind of get this little push going on right now. It's about yes. damn time. She should be on television every week as far as I'm concerned. So this was just a win-win all around. Uh, tremendous matchup um, between these two on SmackDown. Yeah. The fans won that night. <laughs> yeah, we were the biggest winners by far. And we also got that uh, ladder match, that tremendous ladder match. That was uh, with, awesome. Oh, my God. With the Tongans or the uh, Bloodline uh, successfully retaining their tag team championship against the Street Profits and DIY. Um, man, yeah, th this was just a badass matchup. Like, regardless of how you feel about Tama Tonga, Tonga Loa, um, which I wouldn't tell that to their faces. No. I mean, no. I mean, shit, Tama would just be like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, or, or, or yeah I can't have yeah. the living personification of, of Donnie from Wild Thornberries running after me. I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I ain't fucking with Haku's kids. She, <laughs> you, you kidding me? Uh-uh, no, sir. Uh, but tremendous matchup nonetheless, and um, SmackDown just an overall was a great show that that's the one thing we've been talking about here on pw60 these smackdowns before the the pay-per-view they feel like an extension of that pay-per-view that's going on that weekend yeah uh, and and everything that they did on the show was solid um also you know you know we had the uh that match up there with uh naomi going up against tiffany stratton um and then this just the stuff with Chelsea afterwards, like with the where she's walking through the hallway and everybody's like, Oh my god, what's that smell? You know, like <laughs> uh, dry heaving. <laughs> yeah. Just 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 chef's kiss. Like everything about SmackDown was wonderful. Um of course, though, we didn't get any A Town down under on the show, which I know disappoints some, especially our tribal queen Bree. Uh, but, but you know what? She's kind enough. She, she said, you know what? I'm, I'm game. I want to, uh, I wanted to do my tidbit this week. Cause, uh, I got something I want to say about this situation. So it's that time of the show, folks. Let's go to Bree with her tribal queen tidbit of the week. Hi y'all. I'm Pamela Pepkin and you're about to do Pamela Pepkin's Halloween workout. Woo. This is Alan. All right. Come on. Shake off the Skittles. Shake off the Reese's. Shake off the candy corns. Now ride the witch's broom, ride the witch's broom, ride the witch's broom, ride the witch's broom. Squash Satan, kick him in the crotch. Squash Satan, kick him in the crotch. Squash Satan, kick him in the crotch. Kick that Satan in the crotch. Zombies to the left, zombies to the right. Zombies to the left, zombies to the right. Break it down. I'm a scarecrow doing the robot. Break it down. I'm a scarecrow doing the robot. Uh, okay. Um, I I think Bree's finally just lost it. 
because this this damn A Town Down Under story is just not going to end. So, um, if that's what happens every time they don't show up, you know what? I'm happy with that. That was amazing. <laughs> that was pretty spectacular. I do have to say, I just, I just, it threw me off guard. I wasn't expecting that. And I bet Alan hates CM Punk too. Like, did you get that vibe? Like, yeah, totally. Anyways, uh, let's talk about. <laughs> Let's talk about Monday Night Raw this past week, uh, which was a tremendous show as well. Yeah. Uh, of course, the go-home show going into um, Bad Blood. Uh, kicking off with, what about that tremendous Jey Uso promo at the beginning of this show? Uh, just such a heartfelt moment. And it looks like two Braun Breakers getting a baby face turn. Yeah, like, that was that was a little surprising. I wasn't expecting that. But, I mean, it was still a really nice moment, though. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um also interesting what's com- what's going on with Xavier Woods in the New Day. Of course, he getting a big win over Rey Mysterio, but like pretty much cheating to do so, taking the mask away from Rey. Uh, now he's in line for a title shot against uh, Jay Uso for the IC title, which we'll see on Monday Night Raw tonight. Uh, also, that tremendous Drew McIntyre CM Punk promo to build up to their incredible matchup they had at uh, Bad Blood. That was amazing. Um, we got to see the LWO in action against the Judgment Day and Chad Gable against Kofi Kingston. And it's just, it's, it's really for the first time in a while, whether you don't want to see the new day split up or not, but just like what's going on there. At least it's like some, the most interesting thing they've done in a while. Yeah. Um, that's going to be very unique to see what happens there. Of course, we got Gunther and Sami Zayn, uh, and their confrontation, as we now know, they will be meeting for the uh, world heavyweight championship. Also, too, we got to talk about The Miz. What the fuck, dude? Being a dick yeah. and turning on our truth Like, I guess I shouldn't be shocked, right? Um, yeah, but, yeah. but it's like, so come on. It's our yeah. truth Yeah, come on, bro. It's not cool. But uh, the, big, the big moment, the big matchup of the evening on Monday Night Raw was the last monster standing matchup between one Bronson Reed and Braun Strowman, which has been building for weeks and weeks and boy oh boy we get a tremendous matchup but let's talk about the big moment seth freaking rollins is back he looks better than ever and he ended up costing one bronson reed this matchup how excited were you to see seth rollins back in the WWE? oh man i mean for me personally especially of just like of recent at least the last decade or so of raw i feel like Seth Rollins is one of those comfort wrestlers for me for Raw. And I feel like it's like, oh, I know Raw is going to be good if Seth's going to be there. So it's like, it's so good to see Seth freaking Rollins back. So it's officially Monday Night Rollins again. And it was very, very nice to see how he came back, you know, you know, his revenge against Bronson Reed and very, very viciously so. So it yeah. was that was awesome. I'm so happy to see Seth back. Yeah, I I agree. It's great to see him back. And uh this was an awesome matchup. Uh yeah. like we thought it was. I mean, they practically destroyed everything, including the ring. Right. Um, yeah, I, I loved everything about this. Um and I'm excited to see what's gonna happen with Seth and Bronze of Breed from here. Um but Seth freaking Rollins is back. Like you say, Monday night Rollins is here and it's going to be a hell of a good time on Monday nights. Yes. Well, now it's the time of the show where we go to our good friend, spicy guac for a spicy take. Spicy guac saying stay hydrated because it's very, very important. God, it's so satisfying to do that. God. Stay hydrated. So good. <laughs> oh, I, I totally agree. Spitting water out like Triple H is like oh, the best yeah. in the world. <laughs> you didn't do that at least once in your life as a wrestling fan. I mean, come on. <laughs> You're not living your life. Yeah. Not living. L I V I N. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, coming out of that last Monster Steady matchup, we did find out that uh, one Braun Strowman. 
uh, did suffer an injury, a, a pull or a, uh, I believe it was a pull groin. So he's going to be out for an extended period of time. Uh, and we got some more injury news coming out of the WWE. Unfortunately, it looks like Ilya Dragunov is going to be out for, uh, I believe they are reporting five to six months with an uh, ACL injury, which you hate to see that because I love freaking Dragunov, yeah. man. Like, I, I bummed to, to hear this about him, but um, nonetheless, we here at PW60 want to wish him well. Hope he heals up and uh, we get to see him uh, in the WWE in a WWE ring soon again. And tonight on Monday Night Raw, we did find out it is official. The ring general, Gunther, will put that World Heavyweight Championship on the line against Sami Zayn. Finally. Uh, Finally, this is going to be a hell of a matchup. Uh, I love you, Sammy, but I just I don't see the ring general dropping that championship. Not just yet, anyway. Um, what do you think of this matchup? Oh, this is fantastic. I guess especially to see them go at it again. You know, their last time being what at WrestleMania, right? Yeah. So yeah, I mean, Sammy won that one. So mm -hmm. so I feel like, like you said, I don't think Gunther will be giving up his world title anytime soon but just to see them go at it again always spectacular i'm really excited for this match yeah i i agree i'm excited to see it too it's gonna be a hell of a way uh to main event uh, which i'm assuming is the main event tonight of course they could oh yeah some crazy shit put it on first you never know but uh yeah this is gonna be an awesome matchup nonetheless tonight on monday night raw uh, also, congratulations to one Candice LeRae as she is your first ever women's WWE speed champion. Um, I love Candice LeRae, so I'm glad to see her get some sort of an accolade. I mean, if I'm being brutally honest, I, I really haven't paid attention to the speed stuff that they're doing. I get why they're doing it. I mean, that's definitely to a certain uh, demographic, and it makes sense in this day and age, but like, uh, I, I couldn't even tell you who the men's speed champion is right now, if I'm being quite honest. So, um, but still, though, like I say, great to see Candace get some recognition. I mean, she truly deserves it. She's one hell of an amazing Definitely. performer. So, congratulations to her, and uh, hopefully she has a long reign. And then, oh, baby, oh, baby, let's talk about this. Yes, SmackDown. It teased somebody is coming soon, or some buddies as you put one and one together everything that was teased folks the motor city machine guns are on their way to the main roster looking like they're going to be on smackdown how excited are you for this carly i mean this is i mean this is especially cool not just for motor C city machine guns themselves but for wwe to get a tag team like this i mean I've I've been a fan of theirs for a while. So to see them on a grand stage like WWE, like this is awesome for them. Oh, Do I have my, you know, my 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 other brand and indie heart, you know, just kind of you know worries a little, but as long as they're happy and they're able to kick some major ass, I don't care. You know what I mean? So I just, I just, because back in the day, typically anybody signs with the WWE, the automatically they're going to NXT. I just, I, I feel right. like this is so refreshing to see talent finally get signed. It's like, you know what? We're going to put you on the main roster. Yeah. But like that's, that's how, that's how it should be. You know, like in some circumstances, it makes sense to put them on NXT, but this is definitely not one. So excited to see the Motor City Machine Guns in the WWE and what they are going to do. So. Cannot wait to see what happens there. Well, we want to give a big shout out to our good close friend, one Sienna Chanel, as she has had a pretty busy couple of weeks in the world of professional wrestling. Uh, she's a very busy gal there on the West Coast, and she actually got to, for the very first time, work as a manager slash valet. Yeah. Uh, also, she had an interesting gig where she was a uh, ring announcer at a wrestling show in a library. Like, okay. That being said, though, check out these highlights from what our good friend Sienna has been up to. Titans, Sienna FC Chanel. Yeah. Thank you to everybody. 
everybody at the Nevada Cali County Madeline Helling Library here in Nevada City where we're making our debut tonight. Since we're at the library, there's some ground rules that we got to follow through, but it's also for the safety of all of us. So rule number one, please do not touch the wrestler. Rule number two, please do not get in the ring or involving a match. Rule number three, please do not throw any stuff, garbage, or anything in the ring. And last but not least, since I know we're at the library, but this is only for one night only, please be loud as you can. Cheer, boom, hollering, everything. Because after tomorrow, is the library's back in business, and it's time to be quiet. I always dreamed of like a wrestling ring being in a library, but seeing it, it's like, wow, that's some wild shit. That's like, so fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but seriously, uh, Sienna, we're so proud of you here at the oh, PWC. Wow, that's incredible. Like, you're killing it right now. And like, we couldn't be happier for you. Uh, well, so much going on in the world of professional wrestling. Um, but we got to talk about something that's near and dear to your heart. Let's talk about some GCW, some game changer wrestling, because I think it's that time in the show where we go to the GCW report with Cart, but you're right there. But like, you're, wait a minute, you're yeah, going to, here. You're, so, you're, you're, oh, going it's it's oh my God. <laughs> Chase Curly, your GCW bestie. And it's going to be another weird week with GCW news. I'm going to be focusing mainly on everything GCW Fight Club related. It has been made official that. Yeah, she's fine. Anyway, we knew that. It's been made official that Megan Bain is going to be out of the Art of War Games match for GCW Fight Club. So this means that officially both teams only have three members. Will they be adding a fourth or will it just be a six-man tag? Not gonna lie, there is a lot of speculation as to who might be the fourth members for both teams, but... I would like to know, let everyone know in the Cole TV comments, who do you think will be the fourth member for each team? But besides this match, let's talk about some of the other matches that will be going down for GCW Fight Club Night 1 and Night 2. Starting off with Night 1, we're going to be seeing Sydney Air Akeem take on Leon Slater, as well as Rina Yamashita will be putting her GCW Ultra Violent Championship on the line against none other than the Rogue, Brandon Kirk. And looks like Rena will be running it back for night two, but this time it will be a non-title match as she goes against All Heart, Blake Christian. And then, I guarantee we're going to have another pretty violent match as we see Sequel Pay go against Matt Tremont. We're also going to be seeing an appearance from the Duke himself, Violent J, as well as the return of Ratty Daddy Cole Radrick. Don't forget you'll be able to catch these live on Killer TV Plus first Saturday, October 12th for GCW Fight Club, The Art of War Games, and then Sunday, October 13th for Night 2 of GCW Fight Club. And don't forget that the weekend after, we'll be getting GCW War ready, and we have a lot of great matches like Orin Vite going against Dr. Redacted, Gringo Loco and Jack Evans, which I'm super hyped about. We're going to see Mance Warner, Megan Bain, Goofy Tormenta and Dark Sheik. And then the day after in Blood on the Hills 3, we'll be seeing Sidney Akeem take on Jack Evans. We're also going to see Brooke Havoc, C4, Rena Yamashita, Vipress, Effie, and Chris Bay. So that is all I have for you guys. I know, short, sweet, to the point. But I hope after today, if you haven't already, I hope you check out GCW because they're awesome. Well, you think bye. Back to you guys. Well, double the Carly. I am one lucky bastard. I mean, we're all lucky. Um, I've been keeping it very professional this show. I'm just saying. Um, but thank you so well. much. <laughs> thank you so much for that GCW You're report. Welcome. Um, so much, like we say, going on in the world of professional yeah. wrestling, and of course, so many different indie shows out there as well. So now it's the time of the show where we go to our good friend Michael with an indie report. What up, y'all? It's your boy Michael with another independent wrestling report. 
Uh, first off, we have Pro Wrestling Now presents Bulldog Brawl, Saturday, November 9th, at the Greenview Community Unit School. That is 147 East, East uh, Palmer Street in Greenview, Illinois. Doors open at 6 p.m. Bell time is at 6.30. Pro Wrestling Now on all social medias for more ticket and information. Uh, Time Bomb Pro Wrestling presents Violence is Forever Thursday, October 17th at the Sanctuary Events Center in Fargo, North Dakota. TimeBombPro.com for more tickets and information on that. Doors open at 7 p.m. Bell is at 8 p.m. Lastly, we have Tampa Bay Pro Wrestling presents Dawn of Destruction, November 2nd. Time, TampaBayProWrestling.com for tickets and inf- for tickets on that. That will be Campbell at the Campbell Park Rec Center, 5 p.m. at 601 14th Street South, St. Petersburg, Florida. Y'all have a good day. Well, thank you so much, Michael. And like we say here on PW60, if you're not doing so, get out there and support your local independent wrestling promotion because there's just so much going on in the world of pro wrestling. And But where it all starts is indie wrestling, and indie wrestling Absolutely. is the best. Oh, just saying. Uh, well, let's talk about TNA. Uh, impact from this week was a little bit different as they were affected by the uh, hurricane, of course, the... They ended up just doing a best of Bound for Glory show. Uh, but Bound for Glory is fastly approaching as it is coming on October the 26th in Detroit at the Wayne State uh, University Fieldhouse. And that main event, we know it's going to be tremendous. One of the most anticipated matches of the year in TNA as Nick Nemeth is putting that at TNA championship against on the line against one Joe Hendry. So um, it's going to be exciting to see what happens uh, here in TNA going into Bound for Glory, as they did end up uh, doing some shows there in Nashville. Um, so we should be seeing that here uh, in the coming, uh, in the next week or so, um, or a couple weeks, I should say. But it's an exciting time as the biggest show of the year is on the horizon for one TNA wrestling. Cannot wait to see Bound for Glory. Well, let's talk about, let's go back and talk about AEW because, of course, we also had uh, Rampage and Collision from this past week. And on Rampage, we got a rare appearance by the Elite as uh, Jack yeah, Perry yeah. and the Young Bucks were in action going up against Private Party and Katsura Shibata. Uh, also, we got to see Camille was in action as well. Uh, Queen Aminata going up against Harley Cameron was a fun, solid matchup. And, of course, I know your favorites, the conglomeration going up against uh, the Learning Tree. You know what? This was a damn good show on Rampage. Yeah. Like, they, they've had a couple that's been, you know, kind of back and forth, but this was a solid one this past week. Yeah, um, I absolutely. thought so. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was a great, great show for sure. And let's talk about collision from Saturday night, which man, oh man, they had some tremendous competition with bad blood going on at the same time. Uh, but you know what? They did a good, sh- they, they had a solid show too. Uh, of course you kicked off the show with Darby Allen going against Johnny TV. And of course, Darby's laid down that open challenge for wrestle dream. We now know that he's going to be going against one Brody King. That's going to be a hell of a matchup. Like, I cannot I wait. That. Right? I cannot wait to see that. So that's going to be badass. Um, also, the greatness of the Outrunners was on display as they got a huge win against the Grizzled Young Veterans on uh, on Collision. So I absolutely love seeing that. Of course, Will Nightingale was in action as well. And I want to give a huge shout-out to Beef. As he was in action, I believe, making his collision debut going up against Wheeler Yuta. Of course, Beef uh, from our area or my area here, this neck of the woods. Uh, and he was the winner of the Schmitty this year as well. So huge oh. shout out to Beef. Great great to see him on uh, AEW. Awesome. Uh, tremendous competitor. Um, but also on collision, we got to see the conglomeration go up against the Premier Athletes. Uh, an incredible four-way matchup. Uh, with Hologram, uh, Nick Wayne, Commander, and Action Andretti, and uh, Chris Statlander was in action as well. But the main event, the House of Black going up against Top Flight and Private Party to determine the number one contenders for the tag team titles. And Private Party keeping that momentum going. They will now challenge the Young Bucks 
for the AEW Tag Team Titles at Wrestle Dream this upcoming Saturday. It's yes. exciting. I, I, I don't know if they can pull it off, but I kind of hope they do. Um, like you said earlier on the show, man, just love seeing like private party and finally getting this push that they so Absolutely. rightfully deserve. But we will find out this Saturday if, in fact, they will walk out your AEW Tag Team Champions. And in other AEW news, yes, it looks like the Redeemer himself, uh, it is officially game over for uh, Miro's career in AEW as he has been granted his release. I'm going to be honest. I, I think this was the right move for all parties. Just nothing was really going yeah. on with Miro. AEW wasn't doing anything. Like, he just, yeah. Uh, is, no, let me ask you this, Carly. Does this automatically mean he's WWE bound? Honestly, I feel like for him, unless if CJ Perry is the fuck away from any type of storyline he does, I don't want him. I don't know. I, I don't, I wouldn't see him back in WWE like that. Unless if he can keep that separate, because it was crazy to me that that was almost like the end of had what happened him in WWE the first time and like that weird storyline with, Oh, who's Maria Canella's actually pregnant by and all this stuff. And it ends up being, you know, Rusev or Miro. And Oh God, and then, I forgot about that. Yeah. And, and then he jumps to a W he's, you know, the best man and all this stuff. And then becomes the redeemer and then has this again, this weird connection storyline with his wife again. It's like, why are you repeating history when you know that is not good for your career? For him personally, it just, it really shot. Now I'm not talking about like when she was like just his manager as like, you know, the ravishing Russian and stuff like that. Yeah. I'm just talking about with that weird, like, oh, mm -hmm. I'm with Bobby. I'm with this. I'm being weird. It's like, okay. What are we doing? Not here? doing well for either one of them. So regardless yeah. of where he goes, as long as they're not doing some bullshit with, with some like marriage storyline, I'm gravy. Yeah. Uh yeah, I, I agree with you there. I think uh I think it's gonna work out for him wherever he goes. Definitely. Um, I, I personally I got a feeling he's gonna end up in WWE, but um love to see think. him in GCW. Oh uh, shit. If you get him in GCW Oh, that's gonna be incredible. I mean, I should have matched with him and like Manders. Oh shit! Yeah, that would be great. Right? That'd be something else. So, um, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. And this was kind of a, some shocking news coming out this yeah. week too. Kill Switch was hospitalized. Um, his wife found him like passed out in their home. Uh, apparently, a really bad bout of ammonia uh, that he's suffering from. Um. But he's doing better now. Um, probably will be out for the next 30 days or so and then uh, back in an AEW ring. But uh, we here at PW60 want to wish him well. Uh, hope he gets to feeling better and uh, gets over this. Because, uh, yeah, that shit sucks, man. When you can't breathe and stuff, like, that's, yeah. that's no bueno. So, <laughs> uh, but you hate to hear that, but you're glad, glad to hear that he is doing okay now. And what? Yes, the Costco guys. <laughs> why are they here you say well big aj did used to be a pro wrestler and it just so happens to be he is going to be making one more triumphant return to a wrestling ring as AEW has officially signed big aj to a match uh which it looks like he will be competing against qt marshall uh interesting to note on this like uh aj's last match on the independence actually was a match against qt marshall uh, oh, so wow. kind of some long-term uh, crazy storytelling. My real question is, is like how many damn ch double chunk chocolate cookies and chicken bakes are going to be ringside for this one? <laughs> like is Costco going to sponsor this matchup? <laughs> like, oh, I mean, you have to. It's the double chunk chocolate cookie. Uh, but yeah, this just completely came out of left Hello field. Again. Yes, random. that's right. It's time for the random moment of the week with there me. There you go. Let's Brian. go to Brian. Brian's house random. Yeah. No are in a hat, but that's all right. Still good. All right. So what's good in the hood, in the neighborhood, all that stuff. All right. Now, first things first, I want to ask you all who are watching, 
uh, this episode of P to the dub to the six to the zero. Uh, do me a favor if you're not already, follow all the content creators who you see uh, on this episode, XLJ, MJD, all the initials and acronyms and all the names and all the people. And if you follow me, that'd be even better too. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Don't let this face scare you away. All right, so back to our series about wrestlers leaving companies. And of course, through one way or another, whether it was them walking out, whether a contract was not renewed, uh, released, fired, whatever the case was, or for any personal reasons. So we've covered a lot of WCW, looking back at some of the members of the NWO. I want to move into the early 2000s in WWE and somebody who took the WWE uh, by storm, you might say, as the old phrase goes, was a rookie phenom known as Brock Lesnar. I can't quite say like Heyman does. He come in 2002, uh, of course, we know about his career there and, and everything like that. And we know what happened in 2004, the infamous match with him and Goldberg at WrestleMania 20, Madison Square Garden, where they were pretty much booed out of the building because everybody knew that both were leaving. So here's the question. And considering what happened when Lesnar came back in 2012 and from then on. So interesting enough, what if Brock Lesnar never left the WWE in 2004? How would the rest of his wrestling career have went? If he continued all the way up until recently, all the way through, no leaving, nothing like that. Uh, would mean possibly no UFC career, or maybe they would have done a crossover. What do you think? Championships, all that. Just let us know. Comment below and have yourself a wonderful rest of the week. All right, Brian, thank you so much uh, for that. Like jumping the gun there, kind of a little surprise entrance there. but uh... It was a random moment. It was random indeed, and, and we love you, Brian. You know who else we love here at PW60? We love our content creators. And this week, our content creator is a very unique one because we're talking about one of the best professional wrestlers out there who I don't understand why he is not signed to a major company. But for this week, our Ruby Ringside Content Creator of the Week is none other than Sicky Dice. If you're not familiar with Sicky Dice, are you, are you are you sleeping in a cave or something? Are you hiding under a rock or something? Like this man is legend. Wait for it, Derry. Uh, one of the things he put out I saw recently was great. The uh, the uh, the Eminem parody song on uh, Joe Hendry uh, going mm -hmm. at it against uh, Joe Hendry. Um, I mean, it's sicky dice. Come on, it, 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 if you guys aren't familiar with him, go give him a follow. Like he is a tremendous, tremendous uh, pro wrestler. He's so freaking entertaining. His uh, TikToks and social media is so amazing and fascinating. I can't say enough good things about sicky dice because sicky dice is our Ruby Ringside uh, Wrestling Content Creator of the Week this week here on PW60. And finally, the countdown is on, baby. Yes, the Royal Rumble that's coming to my hometown of beautiful Indianapolis, Indiana. And tickets will officially go on sale. I believe it's November the 15th, I want to say. Uh, so on a Friday. Pre-sales on the 13th, I believe. Um, but yes here i'm so excited for this uh the royal rumble coming to indianapolis this is huge i've never been to a royal rumble before in person so so excited and the fact that it's in my hometown uh it's going to be an amazing incredible time y'all need to get to indianapolis come february 1st because it's going to be a hell of a good time and you're going to be seeing a lot of us there at the royal rumble i'm just saying wink wink so <laughs> well somehow we have went through Carly, so much for joining us here on PW60 this week. Real quick, of tell course. us where we can find you, Carly. Well, you can find me on TikTok, uh, cakebase underscore Carly. I'm on Instagram, cakebase underscore Carly 2.0. 
and I talk about GCW, Deathmatch, makeup, so like any of that, head over there. I am also part of the World Championship Wreckage Podcast, and you saw today, I am the resident GCW bestie for PW60 here on Full TV. Let's go. Well, thanks everybody for joining us. <laughs> thanks everybody for joining us this week here on PW60. Everybody have an amazing and tremendous week, and we'll see you next week on another episode of PW60. Everybody take care. Bye. Bye.